Did you know that you can upgrade your English just by replacing some of your simple sentences with natural, interesting idioms? In this video, I will teach you some important idioms that native speakers actually use in their daily English conversations. And I'll show you exactly the sentences that you can replace and use these idioms instead to upgrade your English. My name's Kayla, I'm an English teacher in the United States. Let's get started with this lesson. This seems kind of strange and suspicious. This is fishy. When something seems kind of strange and suspicious, you can describe it as fishy. We get this phrase from the idea that if something smells kind of bad, it might smell like fish or fish that has been, you know, sitting in the sun or has been rotting for a few days. So if you want to say you're not sure if something bad is happening or someone's lying, you can say, uh, it seems kind of fishy, I'm not so sure. They have not told me about anything and I don't know any information about it. They have kept me in the dark. If you feel like someone has not told you a lot of information about a situation, or you're just waiting to hear the details about an event, a party, or somebody's relationship, you can say you feel like you are in the dark. This phrase comes from the idea that if you can't see, you are in the dark. So if someone is not telling you a lot of details and you feel like you just don't know what's going on, you can say, I've been kept in the dark, or I'm in the dark about this. That means you don't know because you don't have any information. I can almost think of the name, but I keep forgetting it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Have you ever had that feeling where you can't quite think of somebody's name or you can't think of what you are trying to say and you just kind of forget it, but you know it's right there in your mind? Well, in English, we use the phrase, it's on the tip of my tongue. When something is on the tip of your tongue, it means that you can almost remember it. And a lot of times, if the person reminds you of things, you can finally get the words out. But if you can't quite remember what you're gonna say, you could say it's on the tip of your tongue. For English learners, if you can't think of an English word or if you can't think of the exact thing that you're trying to say, this phrase could be quite useful. The more that you practice something, the better that you will get. Practice makes perfect. As an English teacher, I absolutely love this phrase. It's a saying, but it's also a great motto to live by. Practice makes perfect. If you say practice makes perfect, it means that you just need to practice more. It's a really encouraging phrase. If you say this to someone, it means that they're doing a good job practicing and the more that they practice, the better they will get and eventually they will be perfect. Here is another phrase that I'm sure translates to your language as well if you haven't already heard it. The phrase is a picture is worth a thousand words. Sometimes English speakers say this really fast and it sounds like a picture's worth a thousand words. This means that you can't describe the moment or what was happening as well as a picture could. We would use this phrase to talk about pictures that capture the moment or they capture an idea or a concept much better than words can actually describe. I will talk about many details in my life and I don't have a lot of secrets. I am an open book. You can use this phrase to talk about a person that does not have many secrets and is willing to share all of the details about their life. You can say that person is an open book. Or if you are one of these people that don't have many secrets and don't mind sharing lots of things, you can say you are an open book. I am an open book. Personally, I'm not an open book. I don't just like to share everything about my life. I do like to be more private and maybe keep some secrets, but I do know people that have no problem sharing everything and they are just total open books. You can use this phrase again to describe people as open books. I made this at home without using any modern technology. I made it by hand. When you want to say that something was made by you and you did not buy it or you did not buy it from a store or use 
extreme technology, you can say it was made by hand. To make something by hand means to make it by yourself. We use this phrase a ton when it comes to cooking. It's super useful. You can say, hey, I made these by hand. It means you did not buy them from the store. And of course, if you wanted to know the opposite of making something by hand when it comes to cooking, is to say it was store bought. Don't worry about other people's problems. You should just worry about yourself. Mind your own business. Be careful with this English phrase. It can come off as a little bit rude, a little bit spicy. It's kind of just giving attitude. If you want someone to not be so worried about what you're doing or you know what other people are doing and you're kind of protecting their privacy, you can say, mind your business. Sometimes mothers say this phrase a lot to their children when children start asking way too many questions or asking people about personal things in their life. You can say, hey, mind your business. Don't worry about them. So be careful with this phrase because it can come off as rude when you say it to another person. If they're you know, asking you too many personal questions, you say, hey, mind your business. But if you want to give attitude and be a little spicy, just say, mind your business. This part of my house is really messy and it's not very nice to look at. It's an eyesore. We all have that part of our house that is extremely messy. Maybe we throw all of our laundry there or we forget to clean it and we're just being a little bit lazy. And if we don't want our guests to see this part of our house, we can say, hey, it's an eyesore. Don't look over there. This phrase, to be an eyesore, means that it's just ugly. It's not nice to look at. So it could be a part of your house. If you called a person an eyesore, that would be really, really rude. You would be calling them extremely ugly, like it, they're so ugly, it hurts your eyes to look at them. And so mostly we just use this phrase to describe things or parts of our houses or, you know, sometimes there's a house in the neighborhood that is not kept up well. They don't trim their lawn, they don't rake their leaves, and they haven't painted the house for years. You could say that house is really an eyesore in this neighborhood. Thank you guys for watching this English lesson with me. My name's Kayla. I'm an English teacher here in the United States. You can visit my website at englishwithkayla.com to check out my English course, or you can follow me over on Instagram to learn English with me daily as well. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. And if you want to check out my previous two lessons about English idioms that you can use to replace your simple English phrases, go ahead and check out these videos here on screen. Thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next lesson. Goodbye.